Hi, we are almost done with the Book of Mormon today. We are going to finish Ether and begin Moroni. And then two more days together on this and we will have completed the Book of Mormon together. And I've loved having this opportunity to join you in your study. So Ether 14 through 15 is one of the most bloody, horrific battles that ever was fought on the American continent. And Shiz is one of the most feared um, uh, army people, <laughs> military people. And Coriantumr is um, remembering Ether's prophecy about the complete annihilation. Um, if you think to the game of chess, and if you study any of military operations of Asian cultures, um, they, the war goes on until the king is dead. So you'll, you'll recall in the Book of Mormon many times where there were kings put in prison, the war still continued because the king was alive. This next two chapters is one of the most, I think, um, not overstated, but horrific um, final battles. And... So as you read this, you realize that they gathered for four years to prepare. Like they were, they were a warring people. That was their big focus. Shiz is this most feared um, warrior. And we see in chapter 14, he's pursuing Coriantumr. But in the end, Coriantumr is then pursuing Shiz. It is estimated as we go into chapter 15 that over 2 million men, women, and children died during the end of the Jaredite people during this battle. And um, if you consider women and children also fighting, um, that really tells you what is said in chapter 15 that, that Satan had gotten the hold, hold of the hearts of these people. And the spirit of the Lord could no longer dwell with them. Can you imagine? And then, I don't know. I mean, even as a child, if you're reading the Book of Mormon with your family, that final scene where Shiz is beheaded by Coriantumr and then he rises back up with no head to wound Coriantumr. I mean, can you even make this up? This is better than any Hollywood movie for sure as you watch these two leaders fight each other. And so now here it is, Moroni. He has finished his compilation of, and he says he's only put, in, put a portion of the records together. He's had to read all of this while he's also living his own hell. Right? He's, he's living through his own war where he's being pursued and he's moving from place to place to place. Um, as we go into Moroni 1, though, remember, he is no longer abridging. These are his original words. And I've talked to you about how Moroni and Mormon feel personal to me because I'm also a compiler. And in the books that I've compiled, I've also inserted my own stories that are my voice. So even if I helped edit or co-write or ghost wrote any of the other stories, Moroni had done that. So he says it came to pass many, many times as he was compiling and abridging the Jaredite record. But you'll see he never says that in the book of Moroni. His tone and style changes and because these are his original thoughts. Um, in Moroni, he has uh, sermons and two letters from his father, Mormon. But in these original writings, Moroni is determined to share sacred teachings. And I think it's interesting, as I've shared on a previous message, that Moroni thought he was done. And yet we get this beautiful um, record of church organization that goes from chapter 2 in Moroni to chapter 8 in Moroni. And we see the pattern of the organization of the church has not changed. I'd invite you to compare these chapters in Moroni 2 through 8 with DNC 20 and see how um, the organization of the church is the same. I wanted to share um, the final thoughts here um, from Joseph Smith as you finish chapter 2 on what the um, Holy Ghost um, helps in organizing the church. The Joseph, Joseph Smith quote is this, 
The Holy Ghost is necessary to make and to organize the priesthood, that no man can be filled to any office in the ministry without it. We also believe in prophecy, in tongues, in visions, and in revelations, in gifts and in healings, and that these things cannot be enjoyed without the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so as you finish that um, first chapter in Moroni, it talks about the power of the Holy Ghost in verse 3. Sorry, in chapter 2, not chapter 1. The other thing I wanted to share is that it's interesting to note that Moroni, after having made an end of his abridgment and as he's moving, he's covering a lot of miles. And I found something in this reference book that I thought was so interesting. I had to read it directly because I had not ever read this. Um, it's found, I think, both in our Book of Mormon, the book, our Book of Mormon, and in 400 Questions and Answers book, um, page 210. But this is a prophecy that Brigham Young revealed. If it shows that the Book of Mormon lands were in the South American continent area and Central America continent, and as Moroni is traveling so much ground, all these years are passing, uh, Brigham Young said on April 25th in 1877 that as he stood on the southeast corner of the temple site in Manti, Utah, Brigham Young declared this. Are you ready? This is amazing. Here is the spot where the prophet Moroni stood and dedicated this piece of land for a temple site. It appears that he also interacted with other Nephites. During that interim, Moroni finished the record of his father and procured additional plates and abridged the book of Ether. So here we have a modern day prophet Brigham Young uh, prophesying that that temple site in Manti, Utah was the place in which uh, the prophet Moroni stood and declared and dedicated it a temple site. So I hope that these thoughts have helped you. I am so excited to finish the Book of Mormon the next two days with you. Thank you for all of you that have shared this um, channel and this playlist and subscribed, and I hope that it has blessed you in some way. And we'll see you tomorrow.